Bullying isn't just a problem in the school playground. It can happen at any age in any situation and can affect you for years after it's ended. In fact, our next guest believes bullying is leading to an epidemic of chronic life-threatening health conditions. Welcome back to the Harvey Norman Lounge, Kiwi Health Detective Kim Knight. Thank you so much for joining us, Kim. Thank you. That's a pretty big statement at the start, isn't it? Does bullying really have the potential to have long-term health effects? Well, I know it does because I have to say that 95% of the people that I'm working with who have chronic illnesses like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel, these chronic long-term conditions, uh, some of them can hardly get out of bed, they've had to give up their jobs. When we dig deep and we go back, we find out it's bullying. And is this what your role as a health detective is? Can you just kind of give us a synopsis of how that works? Yes, well, what I found is that uh, when we dig deep into the past, and usually the first seven years of life, we, we, we find that certain events have happened that have created stress and trauma, but that trauma has been hidden and stored. But it doesn't go away just because it's hidden and stored. And I guess that stress and trauma could be you know, a lot of different things. Can you give us some examples of what you've discovered? Well, for example, um, I've been working recently with a, with a client who <clears throat> was horrendously bullied and abused in his childhood. His father used to walk into his room and literally pull him out of bed and shake him around like a rag doll. I mean, it just made me cry when I heard his mm. story. And he, you know, 30 years later, 35 years later, he is unable to work with chronic fatigue and he's a doctor. Uh, wow. Yeah. So it does affect people quite Absolutely. majorly, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And, and what, what, is it fixable? Absolutely. Totally. What we need to do is we need to understand the cause of the problem, first of all, uh, and then we need to learn how to put a stop to the behaviour because what happens is whatever happens in childhood, it gets carried on and repeated into adulthood. Um, the, the same behaviours and patterns and, and patterns of not being able to stand up for ourselves, not speaking our, our truth, not being able to communicate our feelings, not being able to put a stop to that, to that bullying. It continues into adulthood without us even realising. So we end up, for example, in a workplace where we, we're bullied by somebody at work or we're at university or, or, in, or we'll attract a partner who treats us the same way for example we'll attract a, a partner that treats us the same way as we were treated by one of our parents when we were growing up. And who's responsible for I guess identifying that? Is it you as the person that's getting bullied or is it the people that are doing the bullying? Well, to be honest, in my experience, the people that are doing the bullying are not really the people that tend to notice it and understand it or want to change it because usually they're the ones that are, that are better off. Right. So at the end of the day, it does come down to the victim, inverted commas, to take back their power. How do you define bullying? It is when somebody intimidates you, tries to control you, is uh, treating you unfairly, badly. In fact, abuse can come in many forms and bullying is just a form of abuse. So we could have physical abuse, mental, emotional abuse, even sexual abuse, and, and bullying is one of those forms of abuse. Are there examples, Kim, of people not realising they are being bullied? Because we tend to sometimes, I guess, laugh off some things that occur in our lives or in our workplace, but then go home and stress about about it later. Yeah, how can you identify that you're being bullied? Yeah, it's a really good question because I, I was bullied and I was in an abusive relationship and I didn't know. So the way that I started to work out, you know, there's something not right here is that we actually have three brains in our body. Science has proven we have three brains. So what will happen is we'll have a lot of confusion mm -hmm. because our gut and our heart brains will be telling us this isn't right, but then our head will come in and rationalize away and go, oh yes, but, and they'll come up with an excuse. So a lot of confusion uh, internally. Uh, also, if we're treading on eggshells, if we're afraid to speak our truth, that's a sign, you know, if we're with somebody who's treating us badly and, and we're in a lot of fear, that's a sign that maybe some bullying's going on. Okay, that's fascinating. And just quickly to wrap, what are some steps we can take? Well, first of all, as you said, sometimes we don't even know it's going on. We've got to recognise it. And sometimes we need somebody else to tell us that. Work with a client recently who really it took a few sessions for her to really understand, oh, yes, I am actually being bullied. So first of all, we have to recognise. Then we have to decide we want to do something about it. Then we have to learn how to stop that behaviour. And then we also need to heal the past trauma. Thank you so much. You must have a fascinating job. I mean, it must be traumatic. Fascinating, but very rewarding as well. And I really yes. appreciate you sharing some insight with us. Thank you so much, Kim.